This video describes the progress made in the development of the double acting hydraulic ram pump or DAR pump from thermofluidics. A device designed to pump water from sources deep underground in a highly efficient man manner with next to no moving parts and no dynamic seals. This beta prototype comes six months after the initial proof of concept alpha prototype and benefits substantially from the data gathered and a considerable amount of semi-analytical and numerical modelling. The device shown here is pumping water up to a level just short of 15 metres. So let's just have a quick recap on how the device works, starting with the components. The pump is essentially a large U-tube designed to fit within a 6 inch borehole. It is connected to two water pipe risers and the pressure accumulator is sealed over the top. Two inlet valves are located on the top and bottom of the pressure accumulator with a single discharge outlet valve inside. A delivery line dips into the accumulator to take the water up to the top which is supposed to be simulating ground level. If we look inside the device we have an impulse shuttle that moves with the boat flow between the two end stops. As the fluid oscillates to the left the shuttle strikes the upper end stop, sending an expansion wave upwards and a compression shock downwards and around the U-bend. The inlet valve draws water in from the borehole and water is pushed out of the outlet valve into the accumulator which then travels up the delivery line. When the water is oscillated in the other direction from left to right, the shuttle hits the lower end stop this sends an expansion wave downwards, drawing water in from the low inlet valve and a compression shock also travels upwards, discharging water through the outlet valve and up the delivery line in much the same manner as before. In this case, the U-tube itself has been sat on some gravel to imitate the pump in situ sitting on the bottom of an aquifer. If we look inside the pressure accumulator, we can see the outlet valve discharging due to the compression shock created by each impact. The valve quickly reseals in between shocks to prevent backflow. Moving up to the upper inlet valve on top of the accumulator, we can see that on every second shuttle impact, the diaphragm moves as a result of an expansion wave and water is drawn into the pump. This gauge is connected to the accumulator so that we can monitor the pressure inside the pump itself. Here we are pumping to a head of around 30 meters, which is higher than the rig itself as there is some additional surface pressurization at the top level. The water being pumped to the top level is being returned automatically to this tank via a separate hose so that we can demonstrate steady state pumping in a circular fashion. We now move to the very top level to consider the drive system. The drive system is technically separate from the DART pump, as any device that produces a low frequency, high volume oscillating flow can be used to drive it. A positive displacement pump is equally as valid as the system we've installed here. Our drive system is a pneumatic replica of another thermofluidics innovation known as the nifty heat pump. There are two of these pneumatic motors mounted on either of the U-tube risers operating in antiphase. Each motor is alternatively pressurized and then vented to the atmosphere to create the oscillating motion that you see here. Pressurization and depressurization is controlled with two flow switches and a couple of solenoid valves. The supplied pressure line is shown here which you can see is operating at a very low level and doesn't even quite reach half a bar. This emphasizes the low amplitude of the input force required to cause this oscillation. As we pan down from the top, you see an expansion tank to the right used to smooth the flow and the exit flow coming up the delivery line and being discharged into a separate reservoir. This is then returned to the borehole tank at the bottom with the pump via the return line.
Here you can see the additional surface pressurization mentioned earlier of around 1.8 bar which could be used to distribute the water around at the surface. A rotameter measures the flow rate. Here we are pumping at around 4.5 litres per minute or equivalently 270 litres an hour. This can be increased significantly by either driving the dart pump harder or by decreasing the head to which it is pumping to. Finally, one can get a better idea of the pneumatic supply through the solenoid valves from the other side of the drive system. So this is the beta prototype of the double acting hydraulic ramp pump from Thermofluidics and we're expecting much more progress in 2012, so watch this space.